the port of Gothenburg have a turnover for one million containers each year. We are running a depot here. We also have, 20 years ago, we are starting up rebuilding containers. We started with workshops and now ended up in bar containers, student apartments, kitchen containers, outside bars, pop-up containers, pop-up restaurants. Yeah, there, is a, there is a big, big industry for us with repairing, rebuilding containers and it's still growing. We are uh, cutting, bending and welding in the <laughs> containers a lot. It all started actually because there was a friend asking for somebody who can do an interior for a, in a container for a workplace. So we said, yeah, sounds interesting. They were working with the Absolute company that are shipping their vodka in uh, containers. And the idea was to reuse one of or three of their containers and to make them into a creative workplace. These have actually shipped vodka bottles before. So that was like kind of the starting point to reuse, to reinvent, reinvent and rethink, give them a, a new purpose, I guess. The project started out with three 20 feet containers and then it expanded to two 40 feet and then we really wanted the these two on top uh, because we, we had a roof and if we had the roof uh, sitting on the just uh, these two containers the roof would be very very low and that it wouldn't give this in between room the same feeling as it has now. Why shipping containers? Was the idea that it was an affordable way of building? <coughs> yeah, uh, affordable and also it was something that the company had in their production that they could actually use as a, as a structure and also it, it was movable. So the first thing we did was to go to the production areas in South Sweden where Absolute Vodka is being uh, produced. We were going through their different distilleries and factories and got really, really inspired. We named the different rooms. As you can see, the bottlery in the workshop and the bar. You can see them as like small scenes of the different production workplaces. This is the bottlery. We were inspired by where the bottles were being filled, where everything are really like production lines and stuff. Uh, so here we actually made a, a ceiling a light installation with the bottles from Absolute. We were really inspired also by the process at the factory and the distillery and, and also by the end product. So the bar is actually inspired by the end product. So we try to reuse materials from the production. So this, for example, like normally a waste product but here we use it as a seat for the stool and in the way it's put together like in the sofa niche it makes an exclusive feel to something that is actually just waste also for these tubes they are normally like carrying the labels of the vodka bottles so we use them as decoration these are kind of uh soft uh, to sit on as well. They have so many cardboard boxes uh, at Absolute and they try to give them away for people who move. We were really happy to find the cardboard boxes because we also actually built the back of the sofa niche, me and Astrid. We were up all night yeah, uh, cutting. <laughs> uh, so these are th the same cardboard boxes but they are just cut at different angles. Wow, you did it yourself. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Do you know Interesting anything about using the original floors, the container? When we saw it was quite a lot of 
dirt on the floors when we got them. But it was hard because there were a lot of probably vodka stains and <laughs> <laughs> things that we didn't want to. Yes, but there were also oil, oil stains, so they couldn't actually paint the floors uh, when the oil, oil was there. So that's, I guess, why we, we chose to, to put another. But this is also some kind of wooden floor. I don't know the name in English. Very simple, mm. made from small parts of wood. These are our boxes. The whole wall is made out of uh, wooden boxes just stacked together. And actually, when you ship the containers, these actually fit into these two boxes. So you could put the stools into the wall. These two bo and, and this one yeah. and also one and that, one. that one as well when you move it so they, w they won't take up any more uh, space. So you were thinking about the transport when you designed it? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> But then we got those extra containers as well, so now we can put a lot of things in those. <laughs> These two containers were not only there for, for the high ceiling, but they were actually also used for, for transportation. There is also a small uh, refrigerator here. Did you think at all about the idea of building housing? Yeah? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. For sure, for sure. We were walking around here in this area <laughs> yesterday, and we were seeing it would be so nice to like open these doors. Imagine you have your own apartment and then you just like, you have this fantastic window. It would be, it would be absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> there are so many possibil possibilities with the containers. It could be a, a, a small apartment for someone and then you could, you could actually ship them from one place to another pretty easily. And then also the openings of the containers. Mm. The opening are rolling shutters because we wanted something that, that doesn't take that much space. Because you could work with, like, with doors or something, but then it would take so much place away. So, much. so we wanted this because it's really... Yeah, it's, it disappears. It disappears. Yeah, but it doesn't take up space. No. It doesn't take up space, no. And also, if you want to move the containers, you can't really put anything on them that sticks out. I guess these, the, uh, these things here stick out a little bit, but that's okay, I guess, because they're not... Because otherwise they won't be able to ship them, uh, because they're so streamlined designs and that you couldn't really put anything outside on the containers. Stockholm it takes it, it can take seven years from the beginning of a of a residential project until the house is actually built. So to use the ground because there the ground is, is so expensive in, in Stockholm and we don't have a lot of free space in, in the city to use that space I mean during those seven years for a container. It would be perfect if we could use it more temporary. This is the workshop. It was inspired by, by the warehouse with like the rough feeling with the, the expanded metal in the roof, as you can see here. And so it was actually designed to have all these different machines. You could see the 3D printer here, for example. You can use the sewing, uh, sewing machine. These are removable, so you can change. I mean, if you want another thing, you can change it. So it's a really uh, versatile wall uh, with all the tools. They had the idea about having a creative workplace in three containers. So it, it was actually from there we started. There are boxes filled with different materials, all the safety things maybe for the ear. It's, it's nice you found a system to put the clutter away. Yeah, That's exactly. Kind of important in a small space. No? Yes, yeah. exactly. And, and also, of course, you could have like the, tra the transparent boxes, but that would be a bit more cluttered, so this was to stash it away, but still you, you can read on the signs what things are in, in the boxes. So you have also the larger boxes. You can actually sit, there are still room for, for your legs, but then here there are materials that you can use, like sheet materials, there are plywood, cardboard paper. They also had a hackathon for three days where they reused vodka bottles. So this is actually a sound system made out of uh, the bottle. So there were people here for three days working with these processes. 
So because also of the limitations of the containers, they are, they are not very wide, they are 2.5 meters inside. So we really needed to have these multifunctional things in the workshop. So we actually made these tables, which you could pull out. So you could you can have these and work uh, on. There is one over here as well. Uh, and there is also one. So you have this long uh, bench here, but you also have like the small uh, workstations uh, that will uh, increase the, the workspace in, in the workshop. We actually even made, uh, this is like a closed uh, water system, so you have to actually put, put it on down here, and so you get clean water and you have the dirty water, so you can, actually this is the only room that has plumbing in it. So this is actually a very simple system, this is the clean water here, mm -hmm. so, uh, and this is where the dirty water goes. Uh, and also because we don't know if, if these containers are going to be situated in another country. So we don't know how to connect the watering system in a different country. So it was also good to have like a closed system. Because this could go to another country. Yes, this could go to another country. Of course, you would need to work with the electricity, but that's not as hard as, as changing the, the water system. Was the idea, why shipping containers? Was part of the idea that they could be moved? Yes. Yeah, actually, <coughs> the, the whole idea was that the, these containers, these four containers, they can all carry all the things you need for this creative space. So you can put everything in here, uh, the, the floor, the roof, everything, put it into these containers and ship them to another place where you want to have a creative workplace. It's also so nice because with the temporary structure you can also change the feeling of an area for a shorter period of time. And then yeah. you can remove it and... Yes, because uh, they were situated in uh, a parking lot, so no one really used it. They were in Gröndal in Stockholm, which is an area in a transition, it's a harbour area. But there are a lot of plans about making it a residential area. They've actually already started in, in some parts. So it was kind of cool to be that in-between structure before it will change from this rough place. And I mean, it will be cleaned up and totally different in a couple of years. So it was really cool to be able to, to use that space and also to give something back. It was a parking lot, so no one really used it. And now we have people every day coming by. It's also a very flexible structure. So if you place it somewhere else, that structure is easily changed. You can really build whatever you like. And these building parts, you can make them interact with the city or the place where you are. Would you consider shipping containers as some sort of, uh, could, could they become some sort of like Legos for construction in the future? You, know, you never know what will happen in the future. So we have a big project here in Gothenburg right now rebuilding them to apartments uh, for students since there's also a problem for students to living, fine living, cheap living. So there's two different projects starting up in, in Gothenburg with uh, rebuilding from used containers. And how will they stack them? They will stack them uh, most, it will be four in high. You need some kind of support of course since it's windy and it's just, but it's easily, uh, they can be stocked uh, five height. But if you go on five height, for example, student uh, apartments, there's some kind of fire regulations you have to follow. And it's a little bit more expensive, so we just use four height. 
for buildings, for using them for architecture. Are there limits? Is there a height limit? You mentioned five. Is there a but you can go higher than that? Yeah, you had the possibility to go, uh, I think, I think it's eight, uh, 12 height. If you come to uh, countries that are, that are not so much space, for example, Hong Kong, uh, they will stack them eight up to 11. But in Scandinavia, the space is not the problem here. But in Hong Kong and Singapore, um, there's a space to so the building height. Yeah. And how long do containers normally last? Uh, containers uh, for 10 or 15 years. Most of the shipping lines, they sell the container after 8, 9, 10 years. Because? Uh, that was so damaged. Uh, you can see here on the depot, they are quite rusty. The cargo could be some special uh, and have done it. But most of it is salt water, you can say. So it could just be like, you know, eight years and then it's, yeah. yeah. For, for the shipping industry, yes. But, but, but then it uh, will be sold as a used container to different uh, companies. Uh, and can you use these rusted types for apartments? Is that OK? Still? No. And that will be <laughs> too rusty. What could you use? That could be used if you, for example, in Sweden we are closing down uh, factories uh -huh. and they put the factory in this kind of containers. Wow. We have built so many pop-up containers for uh, salad uh, restaurants. Here have it built, so you can open both sides. You see on the roof, uh, uh, stairs, mm. so you mount. Oh, I see, that's a stair to go up to like a rooftop terrace. Uh, 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 uh. Ah. So when there are some kind of exhibition or they're coming out with a container and pop it up for 10 minutes and I think they sold this year was a record for one ton salad for one day. Can you imagine? Wow. <laughs> So how much do they cost? For example, we are selling a lot of 20-foot units mm -hmm. for a garage. It costs roughly 2,000 euro. And to modify them, to cut and to do all that, is that expensive? You can do a quick pop-up container restaurant for 20,000 euro. If you compare to a, if you should build a house, it's much, much cheaper. And also, they are so mobile if you compare with other building. Mm -hmm. Also, they have the standard measures. These are 40 feet container, and these lower ones, they are high cube containers. These are 2.9, and the other ones are 2.5 or something, 2.5 meters. So they are quite, they are quite low. So we really needed the, the higher cube here so we can make it a more comfortable ceiling height. So these bottom ones are called the high cube containers. And they're the ones you have to use, I guess, if you, if you want to make a residential space out of it. Because 2.45, that's pretty low, and then you have to insulate it, and maybe you want another floor material, so it yeah. gets smaller when building. If you make big holes like this, you have to construct something of a new bearing structure as well, so I guess the larger holes you make, the more of a secondary structure you need to have. Uh, so that's why we didn't put them together. We didn't like remove a whole wall because we also wanted to keep the container structure as much as possible. So this is the distillery. And so we used the steel walls so we could actually write on these ones. It's just a thin finish? Yeah, it's a strip of a metal, yeah. a metal panel. That kind of thing go up easy on a shipping container? Yes, yeah. they insulate with the plywood sheets behind it and then they just put these on with the screws. So I think it's a very fast building technique, I guess. Yeah. Was it difficult working with something so industrial? It was actually quite nice because I, for me, I, I totally love this in industrial style. So. Yes. And then to put some exclusive things into it, combination makes it really nice. And this is a very flexible room. All the furniture are they're movable. Uh, now this is connected to itself, but you could connect it to... You can go to the wall and yes. then connect it. If you want to, if you want to change, 
yeah. you can I guess cross plug plug the you can plug this one in this table and, and the next one in the other table yeah. and just have one plug uh, in the wall. So we actually designed uh, these tables. So we also try to have a lot of the materials in, in a lot of the rooms. Like we have metal walls, we have the expanded metal in the in the workshop and also in here, and then the plywood of course was a reoccurring feature in, in all of the rooms. Also because we found this very beautiful plywood, so we really wanted to use it <laughs> as much as we could. So as so you can ask her wants to show me something on the wall, I can see. <laughs> This is the butlery, of course. These are painted with whiteboard paint. It was a lot of fun working with this project. It also <laughs> helps the creativity that it is a bit rough. And we didn't even, even use luxurious materials in that way. We used wood and, and metal. Yeah. And some white paint. And some yeah. white paint. Yeah. And corrugated, corrugated paper. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just the way it's being put. It's a good thing because it also can be used for homes and residential. Because it doesn't mean it has to be that industrial inside. No. We tried to use a lot of second-hand furniture because it's, I mean, the project is all about reusing. I mean, this is a second-hand chair, and this is uh, the lamp is actually made of an old camera tripod, and the plywood is actually also waste from when they built the space. These are actually the vodka caps. We there use them are. as magnets, and these are old sleeping mats in here. The ones you use when you go camping. So you don't really uh, need to use any glue. The table is uh, also a reused cable drum. And then the chairs are also actually second-hand findings. And then we just repainted them and did like the modern uh, dip dye technique on the legs. Would you consider even small living spaces or...? This we love containers. We are thinking about everything all the time. What can we do? What can be done? We are building uh, small summer houses now. There's so many business uh, uh, challenges with containers. Mm -hmm. We have supermarkets today. They ask us if we could rebuild containers. The people could pick up the bag with the daily food, ordered by internet. Yes. And I come to the supermarket after closing time, or whatever. Just pick up. In a shipping container, but in a ship. So, so you have your number, let's yeah, say, yeah, and yeah, you open it and yeah, you have your yeah, groceries. Yeah. I could work with groceries, but also with other products, yeah. right? With the glue, with glue yeah. that, that have been on a um, racing ground. Yeah. Using the containers as a wall on the racing lap. Mm. The Prince of Sweden, uh, called Philip, is uh, probably turn into one of these containers. <laughs> we have, of course, we have built so many workshops and so on. So we, I don't know where we'll end up in, if, if it will be standard uh, apartments for uh, people. So we we'll just talk, see maybe? what we can do with containers. It will grow and I don't know what it will end it up in. It, it, was, it was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun working with this project. <laughs> okay. So the idea <coughs> is that you can put everything into these containers and ship them to another place where you want to have a creative workplace. By now it's just been in Stockholm for one month, but they hope they can be reused and shipped away to other destinations where somebody, someone needs a place to have some creative work done.
now we're here what they, where they are actually now being stored. So waiting for their next destination. Next destination. So hopefully this will be built somewhere else in Sweden or elsewhere. It's easy, you can just put them on the boat and go wherever you like.